All right, so I'm very excited about this video. And to start off, let's just get into the what, why, and how of this video. Before I get into the details, I want to give you a very clear overview of what we're going to be doing. So what is this video about? Well, this video is going to be focusing on connecting an air purifier to this laser system that you see in front of you. Um, I had this laser for a while now and I made a video about it previously which a lot of people liked and a lot of people did not like very much because I was very reckless with the construction of this laser. However, I have improved it and I will get into those details later. But I just want you to see the setup that I have now. So this is the air purifier that we will be connecting over to our laser system. Now this video is sponsored by EnviroCleanse and they sent over this unit along with a FooBot over here to watch the air quality. Usually I don't deal with air purifiers. This is not really a review channel, but this is a very rare circumstance where I actually needed an air purifier and well, they were as interested as me to see if this would work in my laser system. Uh, if this would work to evacuate all the smoke and clean all the smoke um, for me to have, well, an easier life and easier time operating my laser. That's one thing that really surprised me about EnviroCleanse is that they were very open uh, for me to modify their product. Uh, now I want to be very clear that I am modifying this product. I am um, making it suit my needs. So when or if you buy this product, um, it will not come with the modifications I'm about to do. So we'll get into all the details about this air purifier in a little bit, but I want to get also to the why of this video and, well, why am I doing this in the first place? So based on what you see here, you might be thinking to yourself, uh, Matt, why don't you just use this window? Why not evacuate the smoke straight out this window because it's the closest? Well, the problem with that is right outside that window are my neighbors. It goes directly into my neighbor's yard, and if I do start evacuating smoke out there, then I would get yelled at. And while that would not be the first time, I don't want to start creating more problems with my neighbors. I want to be a good neighbor, right? So from where I am right now, this wall spans about 13 to 14 meters uh, to the right. That's about 40 feet. And let me just go over to the end of this wall and show you what my original plan was. So here we are at the back end of the house and you can just make out the furnace here. Now this window is the last window on this wall. And here we are the corner, that's the fuse box. And now this window is connected directly over to our backyard. Now what I was originally interested in is connecting my laser system over to this pipe here. Now this pipe is connected directly to the dryer. Now um, what I wanted to do was connect my laser system over to this pipe, disconnect the dryer, and just run my machine for you know a few hours and then just re reconnect the, the dryer. All the smoke that would go out this pipe goes directly into our backyard and so it shouldn't bother the neighbors. However, from this pipe to my laser is around 40 feet or 13 to 14 meters and that's a long way. What I was planning on doing is uh, using this uh, flexible foil duct uh, which is around 25 feet and I actually bought two of these connecting them up together and running the whole system from my laser to this pipe and that would be you know that would work but that's also very problematic for two big reasons. This foil duct um, when you stretch it out, I noticed it has very tiny holes and, and it's not designed for pressurized systems but over a long distance I'm just worried that those tiny holes will allow the smoke to leak out and you know a significant amount of smoke to leak out. Now another reason why this wouldn't be a good um, choice is because while well, my cat likes to go down here and sleep and if my cat um, ever decided to play around with this stuff it's very fragile and uh, he could tear a large large hole into this and that could be very problematic. If you're wondering why not just drill out a hole uh, specifically for the laser, well the problem with that is we don't own the house, we would have to get permission to do that or modify anything. And um, if you're wondering why not just move the laser um, somewhere closer, uh, closer over here, well there's just simply not enough space. 
And so th this is the problem that I'm having and uh, that's where the air purifier comes in handy. So one of the biggest changes to my laser is obviously the 60 watt power supply that I bought for it. Um, I bit the bullet and I bought a proper power supply. Yeah, so surprising, isn't it? Because um, before this power supply, some of you may know, I was using a ZVS driver. So that consisted of a flyback a transformer that I rigged up to a ZVS circuit, zero volt switching circuit. And I you know, put that through the, the laser tube, which obviously I didn't know how many amps were going through it. And so I think I was you know, destroying it while running. Anyway, um, now I got a proper power supply and uh, on top of this power supply I have a amp meter. This is a DC amp meter and it goes up to 30 milliamps and it works beautifully on uh, telling me the milliamps that are being consumed while the tube is in, in operation. Now while we have this nice um, overall shot of the whole you know, board that I mounted all these pieces on, I want to um, point out two more things. I added a emergency off switch over here that you can barely see. So um, if anything goes wrong, I can directly shut off the power to the, the power supply for the laser. Uh, another thing is that um, you may be wondering how I connected this amp meter over to the, the power supply. So how I did this is um, the red wire that you see back here is directly connected to the positive end of, of the tube. Now the brown wire over here is connected directly over to the amp meter and then the wire from the amp meter is directly connected over to the negative side of the tube. And that's how I have the tube, the amp meter and the power supply all connected together. So I'm quickly going to go over all the symbols on the power supply and I want to do this because I know when I first got this power supply I had trouble using it because I didn't know what all the symbols meant. So um, this is just to help any of those beginners out there that are um, buying these types of power supplies. And the first uh, symbol is uh, L minus. So that stands for laser uh, negative and that is the brown wire you see over here. Now how I have this hooked up, I have this brown wire connected over to my amp meter and then from my amp meter um, connected over to the negative side of the laser tube. And that's how I measure amps from, from the tube. Now FG I believe stands for frame ground. So that's the, the chassis ground. Uh, next up is, uh, you know, AC, so obviously that's where your 120 volt or 2, 220 volt goes in. So next up we have H, and H stands for active high. Now, what that basically means is that it triggers the laser on a high signal, that being 5 volts in this case. Now, if you wanted to trigger the laser on a low signal or zero volts, you would be using uh, L, the L terminal. That stands for uh, active low, and obviously that triggers the laser on a low signal. Now, P stands for water protection or protection in general. And uh, you actually need to connect this terminal over to ground. Well, if you're not using it, that is. So usually you connect it over directly to ground uh, because if you don't do that, then the power supply will not work at all. I have the P terminal connected over to ground directly through uh, this red wire you see. And if you're using the water protect, then that's great. But if you're not, then you have to connect it directly over to ground in order to use the power supply. Otherwise, the power supply just won't let you trigger the laser at all. Now, ground, in, and 5 volts uh, all tie together because with these three terminals, you can actually control the power of the laser tube. And one way of doing that is manually with a potentiometer. And what you could just easily do is connect the potentiometer directly to those uh, three terminals and you can manually control the power that goes to the tube. So that's pretty much it for the electronics, but when you go under the table, you can see a new reservoir, a new water reservoir for the laser. And I'm planning on putting um, two gallons of distilled water that I bought in here, maybe along with some ice cubes or something like that. So that's, that's really all there is to it. That's all the changes for the laser and we can move on to the air purifier. All right, so this is the air purifier. When we open this up, we can see that there's a quick start guide uh, that also tells us how to replace the filters. 
And the filters themselves, they are stacked like you see here. Now, the first filter on top is the EnviroCleanse um, VOC filter. Now, this has, if you can hear that, this has zinc, magnesium, and titanium in it. So those elements are part of their earth mineral technology, and it's supposed to not only absorb stuff from the air uh, and filter stuff from the air, but also break down all the chemicals, volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, and it's, it's a really nice filter, but it's very thin. And so uh, its effective use time under normal operations is four to five months. And just because I like to be upfront about price, uh, to replace this costs about $100. Right, so the next thing is this HEPA filter. And this is a hospital grade HEPA filter. So meaning um, it filters particles in the air down to 0.3 microns in diameter and it is very thick. It is a very big filter, and so the effective use time under normal operations for this filter is uh, about two to three years, according to the manufacturer. And to replace this filter costs about $150. Now that just leaves us with the shell of this unit. And if you're curious, um, the unit, including the two filters that I've just shown, uh, costs about $650. So what I wanna show you is if I spin this fan around, you'll be able to see these clips on the fan blades themselves. Now, those clips are actually weights in order to balance the motor. And this uh, surprised me a little bit because uh, that means EnviroCleanse actually cares that their motor is very silent. Uh, because the motor, the, the fan, is balanced and built with care like this, um, it enables it to be very silent. So the last thing I was really concerned about with this unit is how hard will the motor be working under all these various uh, tests and modifications that we will be doing to it. So uh, to kind of get a good idea of that, I have a kilowatt meter and I have my multimeter, and I will be using both to measure the amps um, that the motor consumes during operation. And I will be giving all that data out uh, at the very near end of the video. So with all that said, let's get straight into the building process. So here's the important bit. Because of the way that I connected my Arduino over to the laser power supply, and yes, there's more than one way of connecting your Arduino to the laser power supply. So depending on how you do this, this may be different. So keep that in mind. But because of the way I did connect over my system, uh, I needed to make the appropriate uh, settings or configurations in the, in the Gerbil, in the software. And so, these are my uh, settings, most of my settings, 
And as you can see here, the maximum spindle speed, which is usually like 1000 RPM, is set to zero. Now I did that because I wanted to turn off PWM entirely. I did not want my laser to be pulse width modulated at all. Uh, and this is only because that when I did try pulse width modulation with my laser, it didn't want to work at all. And so that's why I'm doing this how I am, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to use my laser. However, in the future, I'll try to adjust all of these settings so, you know, my laser can work with PWM. But for right now, for, you know, these simple tests, this should be adequate. Um, I just care that if I put an M3 command in my uh, G code, then my laser turns on. And if I put an M5 command that, uh, you know, my laser will turn off and it does exactly that. So another important configuration setting is the acceleration of the X and Y axis. Uh, usually, by default, this is set to five millimeters per second. But I changed it so now both the X and Y axis accelerate at 30 millimeters per second. So what that does is, first of all, it makes sure that your uh, machine does not lose steps due to friction or you know other losses. And it also makes sure that on corners, when it cuts out stuff, that it doesn't slow down too much. And you know, if the laser slows down on, on uh, corners, then it will burn that spot in and you know, create a fire rather than cutting it. So th that's what you have to be aware of, but that's really all there is to it. As for controlling the laser power, all I have is this uh, potentiometer, this 20 kilo ohm potentiometer that I use. And uh, the three terminals are connected to the ground, in, and five volts of the uh, laser power supply respectively. It's really easy. I just control this manually and vary the voltage that goes into the in terminal on the laser power supply. Thus, I control the power that goes to the laser or the amps that go to the laser. And because I have an amp meter uh, connected over to the laser, then I can see the milliamp range that I'm controlling. And so this is very handy. So obviously when you're working with a high voltage system right next to a low voltage system, you have to start worrying about ground and interference. So for now I have these uh, curly red wires that have clips on the end and those are my grounding clips. I grounded the frame and also grounded any metal piece that was close to the laser and basically those connections all go to the chassis or the frame of the laser power supply. And once you have that connected over to the frame of the laser power supply, I have a cable going up to a pipe on the ceiling and, and that's basically going to the conduit uh, ground. So I've had this Foo bot running for about a week or so now, and I have had some steady readings. And so I can comfortably say that the air down here, when nothing's happening, is fairly good. These are the current readings, by the way. So just to see how bad the air quality does get uh, without the air purifier working, I wanted to laser engrave this out. Uh, this I really quickly made in Inkscape and then I transferred over to Laser Gerbil. And we will be doing this on cardboard just for testing purposes. If you're not aware, Fubot glows blue when the air quality is nominal or okay, and it glows orange when it, the air quality is not so good. Right now, you can see that it detects the air quality is not very good, and we can see the exact readings reflect that as well. We're off the scale for carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is no joke in large amounts. We also see increases in volatile compounds and particulate matter. Now that you have a good idea of how bad the air quality can get without the air purifier, it's time to try the same test with it. I put the chamber over the laser and connected a pipe from that to the air purifier. For the first test, I set the purifier to its lowest fan speed, and I also let the filtered air simply exit into the same room. This should never be done. The purifier does not filter out carbon dioxide, and a buildup of carbon dioxide is dangerous. 
However, I had a window open as well, and I wanted to simply see how well a setup like this could work. This was purely for the testing of the purifier. I let the laser engrave once more, and the air quality seemed good. There weren't any spikes in bad air quality. I then repeated the same engraving multiple times, and after that I could absolutely see that the air purifier was keeping the particulate matter and VOCs low, but the carbon dioxide was going up. I then wanted to try a longer engraving, and I decided on engraving William Osmond's face. So the laser engraved his face for about half an hour, and for this engraving I had to keep the fan speed at its highest setting to keep up with the smoke being produced by the laser. And in the middle of the engraving, when I checked the air quality, I saw the same thing as before. The particulates and VOCs were being kept low, but the carbon dioxide levels were still high. I want to point out that doing an engraving for half an hour and being comfortable enough with my laser system to walk away and trust it during that duration is a big step for me. This would not be at all possible if it weren't for the purifier's high airflow that kept up with all the smoke being produced. If there was smoke buildup in the chamber during operation, it would cloud up the mirrors and lenses and cause them to heat up and break. Essentially, the laser would break itself. After this, I went back on the workbench and made a new hole for an exhaust tube. I let the plastic basically thread itself into the metal and then use silicone caulking to seal everything else up and this is how it looked like. Alright friends, so this is how everything looks like. So this tube obviously going to the chamber is the inlet and it goes down to the purifier. And then the second tube that you see going straight to the window is the outlet tube. And so everything is hooked up right now. So this is how the purifier is connected and where it's set up for now. Um, I also need to uh, fill in some more water up here in the reservoir and I will do that. But I just want you to see how everything looks like and, and how I have things connected for now. So a few things I want to point out and talk about right now while the laser is working on this. Uh, first of all, I don't know why that light is so bright. I think it might be igniting the gases coming from the wood. I know methane and hydrogen comes uh, from, from the wood when you uh, heat it up. So maybe that's what we're seeing, the laser igniting those gases or, or ionizing gases. I'm, I'm not exactly sure if uh, anybody <laughs> can uh, further explain on that phenomenon. Anyway, it is obvious that I need some sort of window on this chamber. Now, the reason I haven't put a window yet is only because I don't know how I would go about sealing that window. Um, yeah, it's just the problem of sealing that window. I, I don't know yet how I would properly do that without letting the gases escape. So I'm still thinking about that. If, if you have any suggestions or ideas, please uh, let me know in the comments. Another thing I was worried about when this uh, started is the pulsing of the laser. My electronics to control this laser do not like being pulsed very much. Um, but even so, this seems to be working okay. Um, it's just when the laser is being pulsed at about one uh, kilohertz is when I start to see a lot of problems with disconnections and interference. So, um, I mean, this is a very uh, low frequency pulsing, so I, I don't think we'll have any problems. All right, so it's finished and I think I might have burned William Osmond's face. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but in any case, I was curious about this setting and I think it would have actually turned out better if my laser could properly uh, do PWM control and it, it can't at the moment and so I have to manually adjust the power and uh, you know various other settings so there's still a lot of tuning to do but regardless this test was mainly just for the purifier and to see if it could maintain good air quality uh, with you know the laser running for uh, about six hours I think it was Th this took about six hours uh, the air purifier kept up with the smoke being produced and it made sure to filter it so I had a clear gas going directly out the window and there was absolutely no burning smell um, after, after a while of course. When it started uh, it, there, there was a lingering smell but that quickly went away and for most of the testing uh, the FUBOT did not encounter any issues. Um, most of the data captured by the FUBOT was uh, of good air quality and I can prove that to you here. 
because I started engraving at 2 p.m. and then we went all the way to 6 p.m., which is now, and you can see there's no spike. There, there's no abnormal spikes in, um, in particulate matter or VOCs and the carbon dioxide level was also uh, pretty good because I could stand right next to the laser and, and be comfortable and not have any, you know, nausea or noticeable, you know, symptoms of, uh, of lightheadedness. There was one more thing I was very curious about, and that was if my laser could easily cut plexiglass. And I was absolutely thrilled to see it working and cutting this 3 millimeter thick plexiglass in one pass at about 20 milliamps. This opens a lot of possibilities with my laser cutter, and I'm really excited to be able to use it for future projects. So I took out both the filters and I just want to show you the visible color difference. And you can see that now they're a much darker yellowish uh, type of color. And the same thing on the back as well for this filter. So you can visibly see that these filters are absorbing particulate matter in the smoke that it's cleaning. And then on this HEPA filter, um, it's a little bit more difficult to see the color, but um, I guess at this angle, there you go, you can kind of see that the color also has changed on this side, but what's more surprising is when you turn it around and you can see the other side is much wider. All right, so conclusion time. I think the purifier made all the difference in the world when it came to reliably using the laser for a long time. Now, of course, my need for this air purifier is unique and a little bit unusual. However, if you're considering buying this air purifier for its intended application, then I do highly recommend it. Another point to make about this is that, you know, it doesn't look as pretty as other air purifiers, but I think that's okay because this thing wasn't made to look pretty. It was made to perform. It was made for functionality. And you can definitely see that because I just modified it and attached it to my laser system, which is kind of insane. If the fan had any more speed and airflow to it, then you would be looking at a vacuum cleaner than an air purifier. <laughs> now I did do extensive testing on the amperage and the watts that were being consumed when the purifier was under operation. And I thought it would make a difference with the filters installed and especially when they were dirty but I was surprised by the numbers because it seems like it didn't make any difference at all. I measured a 0.39 amps, uh, AC amps, uh, which is about 38 watts on its lowest setting. Now on its highest setting with the same uh, no modifications, no filters, cover closed, I measured an amperage of 0 0.67 amps and that's about 80 watts. So we're talking about a range from 38 watts to 80 watts approximately uh, on the, you know, the range of the, of the fan speed settings. So it just makes me think that we're not stressing the motor out uh, with any modifications and any uh, wear that we would put on the filters. So it would really take a lot of dirt and a lot of uh, smoke to get through the filters until it gets so clogged up that, you know, these numbers change, that you'll experience a higher amperage being pulled and so more watts are consumed. But really the numbers surprised me because it all says that we're not really stressing the motor out at all. Uh, even with my modifications, even with dirty filters, it doesn't seem to care. Now, of course, the system is not perfect. Um, I wish it were airtight, but the tubing is not airtight. There are some leaks in the purifier itself. Uh, the chamber is not, you know, airproof. Regardless, it is way better than without the purifier. Now, this video would not be possible without the help of EnviroCleanse, and I want to thank them for sending over their air purifier that I have shown in this video, and also the FooBot for monitoring the air quality. That was very helpful. And if you are interested in their air purifier that I have shown and want to also help me out and support this channel at the same time, I will be providing a discount on screen right now and so you can get a percentage off the total price. 
because of this air purifier, I can finally use my laser more often and more consistently without needing to worry about it destroying itself in the process of engraving or cutting something. As always, I hope you enjoyed and learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.